Um, Roy Williams is going to be front and center. A big story. Huge story. Uh, not only here in the ACC, but mm-hmm. nationwide. And a guy that uh, knows about as much about North Carolina basketball as you need to know is our next guest. That's Eric Montross. Eric, good morning. How are you? Hey, I'm doing very well. Good morning, guys. Uh, first things first, how surprising was it to yesterday uh, around 10, 10, 15? Did that stun you or not? Hmm. Very. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it was very surprising for everybody. Uh, I, I don't think that, I mean, I think everybody knows that coach is 70 and that there's an opportunity for retirement pretty much at any time, but I don't think that anybody thought that it was imminent. And, uh, of course, now we know that, that it was imminent, and, and here we are in the transition stage. Eric, this is always an interesting time, but especially so at a place like Carolina, right? Because of the tradition, because of the history, because of the depth of the program. And when I say depth, I'm talking about years and decades of connected teams. Um, it, it's it's one where a lot of emotions come into play. So how does that – when you wake up this morning – how does that all kind of connect for the general public? What, what do we need to know about that, that connection of the Carolina program? Well, look, I, th- I think that um, I'll give you an example, and it's not, not meant to be one that's too partisan in comment, but I'll give, the best example I have is that when I played in the NBA for 10 years, I played for six different teams. And on every single team, a player would come up to me absolutely and say, what is it about the Carolina family? Why do you guys always end up back in Chapel Hill? Why are you, uh, why are you going back in the summertime to work out? And I think that's part of what you're talking about, that interconnected web. Um, I think that there is, there's a, been a very intentional, um, purpose-driven perspective that has been developed with Carolina, starting with Coach Smith and continuing with Coach Williams, uh, Coach Guthridge, Coach Doherty. It's been an intentional, uh, they've gone after family. They've wanted to make it more personal than just a coaching position. And so I think that's why it's something that we're, we're very interested in, care very deeply about. Eric, did you get a sense of parallels when Dean Smith said, hey, you know what, I'm done. And with Roy Williams yesterday going, I'm done. Did you, did you get any ties there any connections well i think that for both they went out on their own terms and i think that for both of them they went out uh, you know it, it didn't follow a national championship and and probably uh you know it would have been perfect in those ways to step out while you're on top but i think that that really i don't know about parallels i mean i, I think there are certainly some I think that if we focus on Coach Williams, I think the thing that we saw was his emotion. He wears it on his sleeve, and he is going to show you what's under the sleeve. And yesterday, it was a very raw admission that he didn't feel like he was the right guy for the job. Now, I think there are a lot of us Mm. who believe that he's still the right guy for the job. But in his mind and in his level of achievement that he expects year to year out of himself, out of his coaching staff, out of his players, he felt like he wasn't in a position to continue to do that. Um, I think that there will be a lot of us who might falter on that and say, explain it a little further. It's probably (laughs) not all you coach, but that's where we sit. Eric, I thought last night was very interesting. As compelling as Roy's presser was last night, I, I, I told Mark this earlier today, I thought Bubba Cunningham's comments with the media last night were incredible. Um, I I thought that if I were a Carolina fan coming away from it, you would have confidence that he and Kevin Guskowitz, the chancellor, are going to move through this process in a a quick fashion. They're also going to move through it in understanding exactly all the different things that are involved in hiring the next basketball coach at Carolina. Uh, there's a lot of conversation about someone with connections and someone not with connections. How big a factor do you think that's ultimately going to be, knowing kind of the landscape of where we are right now? Uh, I mean, Wes, I think that that is the question. I think the question is, do you stay within the family or do you do you do what you know uh, what Bubba talked about last night, which is this is a preeminent job in the nation and you know you, you perform a national search. I will say that I do think that for the aforementioned reason when I talked about being in the NBA and having some always identify what is it about Carolina. I think that intangible 
is something that has to be met. And how that's met, mm -hmm. who meets it, I think that's for a decision maker uh, like Bubba and for, and for uh, our chancellor and Kevin Guskowitz. But I think that that is absolutely important. You know, the job at Carolina is much bigger off the court than it is on the court. And I think a lot of people may not fully understand that. But when you, when you look at this Carolina job, it's a management position. It is a position to manage one of the preeminent programs in the country. Whether you're a Carolina fan or not, this is a big-time top four, top five program in the country. It has been that way. It's had Hall of Fame coaches. There are expectations. There's a tremendous university behind it. It doesn't make it absolutely unique. But I think that in a lot of ways it is. And I think that that's something that's going to have to be considered. I think that when you look within the coaching tree, within the family, the Carolina basketball family proper, I think you do see that there are folks who simply understand something at a deeper root level than you get with someone outside. Now, Bubba is a great example of someone who's come in from the outside and I think has done a very good job of not just embracing what is here currently with Carolina, but also not being afraid to grow and not being able, not, not being afraid to show us what is outside of the horizon that we've typically been working off of because he's been a very national based athletic director. So I think it's a, I think there's a, uh, it's a great question. I think it's one that um, will be met with, with proper study. Well, I got to tell you, you're kind of joining us. I know you got a busy schedule this morning, but it's great perspective and unique perspective we can't get from anybody else. So thanks for doing this. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I always enjoy being on your show and, and appreciate your coverage of this. It's a big day for Carolina basketball. You know, yesterday it was about celebrating Coach Williams. And today it's about thinking about the future of Carolina basketball. And Although there was a lot of sadness for the fans of Carolina basketball, the fact is today there's an excitement. I think there should be an excitement about a very bright future because there are a lot of people that care deeply. One of the guys who you have, I think, at the bottom of the screen in Coach Williams um, is certainly making sure that the cupboard is not left bare. And we've seen that at every, at every turn of the hands. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. Take care, my man. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a, have a good weekend. Happy Easter. Mm -hmm.